Since joining Bologna last year, Lewis Ferguson's profile has been rising exponentially. Under the direction of manager Thiago Mota, he has elevated and evolved his game and is now leading this season's Serie A surprise packages up the table towards the European spot. Ferguson comes from fine Scottish midfielding stock. His father Derek played more than 100 games for Rangers in the 80s. This Ferguson again, coming inside himself. Playing it across the face of the goal, it's in the net! Through the middle of Derek Fergus, that pass to Mir Fergus, a great chance for the second! And his uncle Barry is a bona fide legend at Ibrox. Across two spells and over 400 appearances at the Glasgow Giants, he captained the team to multiple league and cup triumphs. Rangers looking to go on the rampage, Barry Ferguson, surely! He's got it! It's Barry Ferguson! Oh! Al Lewis himself naturally began his own footballing journey at Rangers, learning in the academy there between the ages of 10 and 14. He then entered the youth system at another former club of his father's, Hamilton Academical. At Hamilton, the coaches surprised Derek with the position they played him in. I thought Lewis was going to be a holding midfielder, similar to what me and Barry started out as, but the guys here have seen something different in him and are playing him as an attacking midfielder. I didn't quite see that a few years back, but I don't meddle in anything. After being an impressive ever present in the under 20s and having made a couple of first team benches, he made his debut on the 20th of January 2018 at the age of 18 and was a first team regular for the business end of the season, appearing 14 times. In May 2018, he agreed a pre-contract agreement with Aberdeen, a move which generated a bit of drama surrounding the developmental compensation fee that Aki's were due for their young midfielder. They demanded 900k and the whole thing eventually had to be settled in the courts with the tribunal ruling that the Dons needed to fork out around 200k for Ferguson. In short, a steal, as he went straight into the first team and was more or less the first name on the team sheet for his four seasons at Pataudry. Although occasionally used further up as an attacking midfielder or deeper as a DM, he was most commonly deployed in the centre of the park with a box-to-box -box or ball-winning role, which suited not only his solid technical abilities like his tackling, passing and first touch, but his outstanding physical and mental attributes. Extremely fit and in possession of a hell of an engine, his work rate stamina and determination meant he always put in a proper shift for the team, leaving everything out there. Calm and composed, he was also a leader on the pitch, as well as possessing the grit and determination needed to fight for every point in Scotland. Most modern midfielders are expected to chip in with the odd goal, and Ferguson has a little issue in that department. His power, presence and herring ability make him a potent aerial threat. His thunderous right foot has been responsible for a few screamers. However, in his first two seasons at Aberdeen, he was a much more prolific provider than scorer, laying on 17 assists compared to his 11 goals in all competitions. This is a statistic which he flipped on its head in his final two years with the club, when he scored a crazy 26 in all competitions. Now, being appointed as the team's designated penalty taker obviously contributed to this tally, but what a lot of people forget is that he's still got to stick them away, and the icy cool Ferguson is pretty much a guarantee from the spot in even the tensest of situations, having missed only one of the 16 he's taken in his career. Naturally, his consistently energetic and productive performances had caught the eye, and in the summer of 2021, he was involved in a transfer saga of sorts. Aberdeen rejected an insulting £2 million offer from newly promoted Watford for that season's top scorer, and Ferguson handed in a transfer request. This was immediately rejected. That was as far as it went, as it will never be in Lewis's DNA to down tools or give less than 100%, and after suffering a few sleepless nights worrying about his future, he got his head down and worked hard to have a great individual season season in a struggling Aberdeen team which could only muster a 10th place finish in the league. But in 2022, the Dons could no longer resist the inevitable, and Lewis Ferguson took his next step, completing a reported £3 million move to Bologna. Um, but listen, it's what a move it is for him. He left Aberdeen having scored 37 and assisted 23 in 169 appearances in all competitions, of which all but one were starts. Extremely reliable and almost never succumbing to injuries, he missed only 16 matches. Some notable highlights of his four-year spell there include legendary late winners against Kilmarnock. It is Ferguson! Livingston. Turned in by Ferguson. Row PS. St Mirren. Hearts and Dundee and dramatic equalizers against Celtic St Johnston and Rangers 
He also scored the only goal in Aberdeen's 2018 Scottish Cup semi-final win over Rangers. They ended up losing 1-0 to Celtic in the final. Just quickly before we move on, I find it completely baffling that Rangers never made an attempt to sign Lewis before he moved to Italy. There is no doubt in my mind he would have ended up captaining the side and the transfer fee was something of a bargain. Ferguson's choice to switch the SBL with Serie A was not without precedent as it has become something of a trend in recent years for young Scots to make the journey to Italy. It was far from a fairy tale start for Ferguson. A nightmare with his visa and passport delayed his arrival and saw him miss the first Coppa Italia match. A two match suspension carried over from his time in Scotland meant he was unavailable for selection in the Serie A. After serving his ban, he made his debut against AC Milan, coming on for the final six minutes at the San Siro. He was then an unused substitute for match days four and five, as under pressure boss Zanisha Mihailovic went for experience. On the 6th of September 2022, Bologna took the desperately difficult decision to sack Mihailovic who had been diagnosed with leukemia in 2019. On 16th of December, he tragically lost his battle with the illness and passed away at the age of 53. His replacement, Thiago Mota, took an instant liking to Ferguson, and it's easy to see why, as the Scots determination and work rate suits the high intensity position style football he wants to play. Mota has also seen in Ferguson the potential to be an attacking threat, encouraging him to make more forays into the opposition's final third and to take a shot if the opportunity presents itself. This resulted in goals for Ferguson in his debut campaign, seven in total, including a fine run of scoring in each of the last three league games of the season. None of these seven strikes were penalties and he ended up as Bologna's third top scorer last season. And there were some crackers too, a gorgeous first touch and clinical finish from Posh's inch-perfect pass against Monza, a deft glanced headed leveller against Salernitana and a trademark last minute winner against Lecce. The pick of the bunch though was undoubtedly a cracking curled effort following a smart 1-2 to make it 3-0 against Sassuolo, a strike which deservedly won Serie A goal of the month. After a decent debut campaign in Italy in which Bologna finished 9th, Lewis Ferguson has dramatically raised his game and is operating at an elite level this season. Thiago Mota likes to start Ferguson behind the striker Zerkzi and between the wingers Ndoy or Sailmakers and Orsolini. Statistically, he's one of the best central attacking midfielders in the league. He is currently Bologna's third top scorer with three goals, one behind Zerkzi and Orsolini. This gives him half as many as Monza's Andrea Copani and two less than Giacomo Bonaventura and Hakan Chalanolu. As I mentioned earlier, Mota has encouraged Ferguson to have a crack at goal and this is represented in his 2.17 shots per game, most of which come from inside the box. Although his 36% shot accuracy is not the worst, a small improvement could have dramatic effects as Colpani takes more shots per 90 from further out but is over 10% more accurate and has double the goals. Ferguson is a wonderful passer of the ball and he does it a lot, mainly short ones, which makes sense given the fast, fluid, flowing way that Mota wants Bologna to play. His overall accuracy is exceptional and only slightly worse than Chalanolu, who admittedly does attempt many more passes. He has developed a great understanding with his fellow forwards, Zerkzi in particular, and has three assists to his name already. As I mentioned previously, Mota wants Ferguson to make positive runs, which he does really well, as evidenced by his 35 touches in the opposition penalty box, only one less than Colpani. Crucially though for Bologna is Ferguson's brilliance at the other side of the game, and this is where he blows away many others who play in the same position as him. He's attempted substantially more tackles than the likes of Bonaventura, Coop Miners, and Colpani. The majority of these tackles occurred in midfield, showing his importance in stopping the opposition in their tracks and helping his team to mount an attack of their own. Bologna were handed what on paper looked like a nightmare set of fixtures as they had to face off against AC Milan, Juventus, Napoli and Inter in the first eight games. Only the Rosinieri managed to defeat them. Ferguson's consistently great performances have been key to navigating this tricky start, with his best showing coming in the 2-2 draw against Inter, his man of the match heroics earning him a rating of 8 on sofa score. And while a 2-1 loss to Fiorentina before the international break saw them slip down to 8th, only 3 points separate them and 4th place Napoli. His winning goal against Lazio brought him level with Dennis Law as the top scoring Scot in Serie A with 10. If Ferguson and the rest of Mota's men can continue the way they've started, then qualifying for European 
gaming competition is a real possibility for the first time in 20 years. And it is not only on the pitch that Lewis is turning heads, as he recently made headlines for delivering a post-match interview in fluent Italian. Pero siamo, siamo per, per so, while Motta may wish to keep his Scottish star a secret and has implored journalists to stop talking and writing about him, I'm afraid that the cat is already out of the bag and the rumours which first surfaced last year linking him with a move to Juventus are only growing stronger and it's only a matter of time before he is playing for one of the biggest clubs in Europe. Although it's unlikely that Lewis Ferguson will break into Scotland's starting 11 ahead of McTominay, McGregor or McGinn, I think Steve Clark has no choice but to include him in his 23-man squad for Euro 2024 to give Ferguson a chance to add to his current 10 senior Scotland caps in Germany.